Yay! Yay! All right, here's another simple example of Gauss's law. The idea being um, that if we look at the electric field around some volume, that tells us what the charge is like inside the volume, right? So the, the overall idea behind this Gauss's law is that E, oops, uh, let's write it like this, E dot DA uh, is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught, right? And remember, what does this mean on the left-hand side? That thing on the left-hand side means net flux through the whole surface. Um, so after you see this lots and lots of times, you're not going to be reading it as E dot DA, right? That's sort of sounding it out. But what that means, the, the concept that should go in your head um, is net flux through the surface. So if I add up all the flux going through the surface, that ought to equal uh, the enclosed charge uh, divided by some number. Okay, so look at this example. Um, here I've got a rectangular box uh, with certain dimensions. I have an electric field, and again, just to be simple, just so we can get this in our heads, um, just take the electric field going to the right, just in the x direction. So I have E1 going to the right and E2, um, and those are different. So on the left-hand side of the box, um, what did I say? Uh, E1 has a magnitude of 250 newtons per coulomb, and over here, E2, let's say it's 500. Right? So the electric fields are different on the left-hand side of the box and the right-hand side of the box. And these are the only fields. Um, so here I've got, here's my, uh, here's my vector A. There's my normal to that surface. And then here is the normal to that surface. Right? There's my A for here. Here's my surface normal here. Um, the electric field is uniform across the surface, so that means I can turn this, instead of a complicated, oops, let me write it in white, oops. Um, in, ex, uh, in, instead of a complicated interval, we can just make this into a sum of E dot A, because uh, A is uniform um, where E is on each side, and so this is just Q enclosed or epsilon naught. Okay. Um, notice we have up here, there's a from the top, and then likewise on the bottom, it'll be pointing down. But the electric field um, is going to the right, right? And so E dot A, if those are perpendicular, I get no contribution from the top and the bottom, the front and the back. The only contributions I get is from the left-hand side and the right-hand side right, for that sum. So if I'm trying to figure out the net flux through the box, that's the only thing that counts, is just the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Um, so, oops, again, I need to switch my colors. Okay. Um, what do I have for the left? For the left, my flux, what's the flux through the left-hand side of the box? It's going to be E dot A. Right, so E dot A, E A cos and theta. Theta is 180 degrees because E is going to the right, A is going to the left. So that's going to be E times A. So it's going to be 250. Um, except I'm going to have a negative sign, right? Because of the cosine of 180. Um, and again, that fits the definition. If the flux is entering the volume, then we call that negative. When it's leaving, we call it positive. So for the left-hand side of the box, the flux is coming in. So I get my negative sign. 250 times the area. What's the area? Well, it looks like it's 2 centimeters squared. So it's 250 times 0.02 squared. Uh, and then I have to add the flux coming out. So I got plus 500 times 0.02 squared. There we go. Well, now I'm done. So now that's the total amount of flux. Um, and this has to equal the amount of charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. Um, so when I carry this out in the calculator, what I get is 0 0.1 is the sum of those, um, uh, those fluxes is Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Uh, this tells you, by the way, you know immediately that there has to be positive charge in the box somewhere um, because the total amount of flux coming out 
is greater than what's going in. There's got to be a source of flux coming from somewhere inside the box. Uh, and that would be charges, right? Charges are the source of electric flux. So if there's more coming out than going in, you know that there has to be some source. Um, okay, so this is how you figure out how much. So uh, just solving for Q enclosed, that means the amount of charge inside the box is just going to be 8.85 times 10 to the minus 13 um, coulombs. Nice. Um, yeah, my hunch is that like uh, dogs, for example, uh, instinctively understand uh, Gauss's law because it's sort of like sniffing out the electric field to figure out what's in the box. Um, dogs can sniff out the source, right? They, they know that there's a treat in the box because they sample the field out this, the, the field of smelling like a jerky treat or something. They can, they, they, they sample the field. And so they know that there's something inside the box based on what they sample outside of the box. Um, and so we do the same thing with Gauss's law. We sample the electric field outside and we see if there's something inside just based on what the field looks like outside. Um, Okay, so uh, that's uh, it for that example. Next, coming up.